What if the smoking gun for alien life isn't light years away on some distant exoplanet, but hiding right under the icy shelf of a tiny moon right in our own solar system? That's right, I'm talking about Saturn's icy little troublemaker, Enceladus. <laughs> and folks, 2025 just flipped the script on what we thought we knew about it. Yes, forget Area 51, the real extraterrestrial drama might be happening on a moon smaller than Arizona. Yeah, my state, right here. <laughs> Spewing water like a busted fire hydrant into space. Stick around, because today I'm going to show you why Enceladus matters more than ever. How brand new science is rewriting our search for life, and why the world's space agencies are suddenly racing to get there first. Yes, the Saturn's moon. Can you believe that? <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> let's start with the basics. Back in 2005, NASA's Cassini spacecraft noticed something jaw-dropping. Massive geysers blasting out of the cracks near Enceladus's south pole. We're talking about plumes ejected. 79 gallons of water vapor per second. Imagine old Faithful in Yellowstone. Now put it in space and supercharge it and run it 24-7. <laughs> These geysers aren't just for show. They're coming from a hidden global ocean beneath the ice, kept warm by Saturn's tidal forces. So what do we have? Liquid water, organic compounds, and energy. Yeah. That's the holy trinity for life as we know it. <laughs> and it's like Enceladus just chipped off all the ingredients for life in the cosmic Costco. Uh, bu uh, bulk water, bulk energy, and bulk chemistry. Mm. Uh, but there's this is where things get wild. In September 2025, scientists ran experiments simulating Enceladus icy a surface under bombardment from Saturn's magnetosphere. And what did they find? Those exciting little uh, organic molecules we thought came from the ocean, like methanol, uh, carbamic acid, and amino acid precursors, well, they could actually form right on the surface. Translation, uh, just because the molecules that we see in the plumes uh, look like life, they don't automatically mean they bubbled up from the oceans below. So just because you see them, don't mean they come out of the oceans, and it, yeah, doesn't mean there's life. <laughs> or the precursors. Uh, anyway, one of the lead researchers, Grace Richards, put it this way, although this doesn't rule out the possibility that Enceladus's oceans might be habitable, it does mean that we need to be cautious and making that assumption just because of the composition of the plumes. In other words, not every puddle in space is a hot tub full of aliens. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> NASA's 2023 analysis uh, had hyped those uh, plume molecules as life sparking. Now, 2025 says, hang on, maybe it's just radiation chemistry. Uh, both. Could be true. <laughs> uh, anyway, the key problem is this. How do you tell the difference between organic molecules formed in the oceans uh, versus those that were baked on the icy surface by Saturn's radiation? Mm. Oh, well. That's why the next generation of missions must be designed carefully. If we don't separate surface chemistry from ocean chemistry, we risk false positives. And nothing runs an alien party faster than showing up, expecting microbes, and finding out it's just a fancy ice cubes. Ah, <laughs> uh, but we got an international moon rush. Believe that? Uh, yeah, not just our moon here. And the race is on. Just last month, August 2025, China announced an ambitious Orbiter Lander Driller Mission. Yes, to Enceladus. Target it 
Good 2030s. I mean, just right around the block, all the way out to Saturn. Saturn's icy moons, that is. They're not just playing around either. Their plan is to drill near the South Pole and go straight for the ocean. Hey, aren't they planning to drill Earth's moon's South Pole for icy water? Or for water ice? Yeah, okay, sounds familiar. But meanwhile, NASA has its uh, orbital lander, lander concept in the works. Uh, yeah, if we could keep bonding with a possible launch in the 2050s, uh, just 20 years later. Uh, and uh, ESA, the European Space Agency, has their Voyage 2050 mission uh, ideas lined up too. Suddenly, everybody wants a piece of the icy moon. Uh, some will be latecomers to the party, it looks like, by a long shot. Anyway, it's uh, like the New space gold rush. Who knew that the prize wouldn't be Mars or asteroids? But a frozen snowball uh, blasting off cosmic steam. <laughs> That's a lot of interest in Vesta, that asteroid. And we're going to be talking about Mars too. But anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and also K218B. Anyway, that's... Uh, Another story. So you know you might be wondering, Greg, why does this matter in 2025 specifically? Well, here's the deal. The James Webb Telescope has spotted possible biosignatures on exoplanets like, yeah, K218b. Europa Clapper is gearing up for a launch, or, for a launch really soon uh, to go to Europa. And here's Enceladus. Not light years away, but right here in our solar system, practically begging us to sample it. <laughs> if life exists in the cell of this ocean, it proves something huge that life is rare. That's if they find it. It's common. Could be. And it's common here. Then almost certainly out there too. Now, I do subscribe to panspermia. I don't see how complex organisms cut a, a cell. A single cell has more complexity than entirety in New York City. And as soon as the rocks got a little bit cool on Earth, boom, life. Mighty curious. So, yeah, I'll get uh, Richard Hoover to talk about that again sometime. Then we had him on the channel here a long time ago. I'm about to call him up, try to get an interview soon. Anyway, but, you know, imagine the shift in funding and philosophy uh, that would occur if we find life anywhere else. Yeah, we'd go from being a lonely accident in the universe to being part of a crowded cosmic neighborhood, at least in terms of microscopic bugs. <laughs> but all thanks to the smaller than Arizona moon that sprays like old faithful. <laughs> So what kind of life could we actually expect to find there? Enceladus's ocean is thought to be highly alkaline with a pH of about 10.6. You know, like my garden out here <laughs> in Arizona. Uh, you know, it's like similar to ammonia. Cassini detected hydrogen and oxidized organics in the plumes. But is it from the ocean or the surface? But you know, that's basically a buffet for microbes. On Earth, we see life thriving in deep sea hydrothermal vents and boiling acid pools inside of rocks. If these microbes can survive in those environments, why not in Enceladus's ocean? If life's there, it's probably microbial. Not little green men, but little green slime. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like China wants to corner the market on a new kid's slime play toy market, right? <laughs> well, keep looking up, my friends, and subscribe and bang the bell to Galactic Gregs to get new notifications because we do have some fun videos on here, some informative videos. So like I said, just keep looking up and thank you for watching. <laughs>